Hey, it's Steven with Parts Doctor. I'm gonna show you how to replace the rotor position sensor in this Fisher & Paykel washing machine. We'll need a few different tools for the job. We'll leave those listed in the description below. Let's get started. The RPS sensor or rotor position sensor monitors the speed that the motor is spinning at. When the sensor fails, you may receive a code related to the RPS sensor or the washer may not spin or agitate properly. For this repair, unplug or disconnect power and the water supply to the washer. Before we get started, the very first thing we need to do is disconnect the water supply lines and ensure that the washer is fully drained. Remove the lid by firmly grasping both sides and lifting up. Now, remove the two screw covers, ours is missing one, followed by the two screws. With access to the back of the washer, remove these two Phillips screws. Next, tilt up the control panel and disconnect the display electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Then, remove this electrical cover by pulling on the top and sliding out. Next, locate the motor RPS electrical connector, depress the locking tab, and remove it. Now, tip the top cover up so you can access the area where the wire needs to route. Next, lift up on the damper rod hanger to release it from the chassis. Now, pull the damper rod hanger out of the way and drop the new sensor to the floor. You want to make sure it's in this area so you don't have to worry about damaging the wires. Then, feed the electrical connector through the opening alongside the other wiring harness. Then, reinstall the damper rod hanger by lifting up and setting back in place. Make sure not to pinch any of the wires. Then, close the top cover. Now, peel back the foam and continue to run the wire alongside the other harness. Next, remove the pressure sensor tubing from the retainers, being careful not to damage it. Then, route the new harness beneath, connect, pull out the slack, and place in the wire retainer. Then, reseat the pressure sensor tubing. Feed the excess wire through the opening and put the foam back in place. With the new sensor connected, we can now cut the old sensor wiring, making sure not to accidentally cut any additional wires. Next, reinstall this cover by inserting the two tabs and pushing back in place. Now, insert the tabs on the control panel into the slots on the top cover Reconnect the electrical connector. Rotate down and set back in place. Then reinstall the two Phillips screws. Now reopen the top. Using one of the provided zip ties, secure the new wire to the old wiring harness. And close the top. Now, reinstall the two screws, followed by the screw covers. Next, reinstall the lid by aligning and pushing till it snaps back in place. With everything done up top, it's now time to flip the washer on its side so we can access the bottom. Using a 5 8 inch socket, remove the bolt securing the rotor. and lift off to remove. Now, using a 3 8 socket, remove these four bolts. Now, remove the stator from the motor. Then, remove the wiring harness from the retainer. To remove the sensor from the stator, pry on the two locking tabs, wiggle, tilt, and pull to release it. If you have a bad rotor sensor and you need to purchase a new one, you can check out our website, partsdoctor.com. We'll leave the link in the description below. 
You want to make sure you're searching with the model number from the tag in your washing machine to make sure you get the correct part. With the sensor released, you can now cut the wires. Again, make sure not to accidentally cut any other wires. Next, grab the new sensor from inside the chassis and pull out. Now, connect the new sensor to the stator by aligning, pushing until the locking tabs snap back in place. The notches here on the stator need to align with the tabs on the sensor. This may take a few attempts to get done. Next, reinstall the stator onto the motor, making sure the sensors are facing towards the rear of the washer. Reinstall the four bolts, making sure to start by hand and tightening in a crisscross pattern. Then place the wires back into the retainer. Now reinstall the rotor onto the drive motor by first ensuring the splines lined up, then tighten down the bolt. You may find it difficult to reinstall the rotor onto the drive motor, so it may take you a few minutes. Be careful not to over tighten and strip the bolt. Finally, Finish securing the new wiring harness to the old one with the provided zip ties. With everything put back together, plug the washer in, test it out to make sure everything is working properly. So that's it for this video. If you have any tips or tricks of your own, let us know in the comments below. And if you like fixing things, please consider subscribing.